Hey, Vsauce, Snazzy here. Wireless charging. It's a handy feature available on an increasing number of gadgets. Pop your phone, smartwatch, or Bluetooth earbuds down on a pad and see them charge wirelessly. Or is it? This video is sponsored by Skillshare, the learning platform for creators with over 17,000 tutorials. Sign up today with the link below. You see, wireless charging is just a marketing name. It's actually magnetic induction charging, and it's not a new technology. It was first discovered by Michael Faraday in the early 1800s. If we connect a light bulb or an LED to a loop of copper wire, and then we rapidly move a permanent magnet back and forth, you'll see that the bulb starts to light up a bit. No, no, this is not witchcraft, but it happens because changing the magnetic field experienced by the loop when you move the magnet back and forth induces a voltage into the coil. Okay, dude, cool. What does this have to do with wirelessly charging my phone? Well, the wireless charger's coil similarly generates an electromagnetic field, and it induces a current into a similar coil that's found inside your smartphone, which then charges the battery. Now, while the theoretical concept behind induction charging isn't new, implementations of it, they are. I mean, we all know that the first smartphone to ship with wireless charging was the iPhone 8. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, it was an Android phone because Android is better and they always do things first. Wrong. It was the WebOS packing Palm Pre to first ship with wireless charging capabilities clear back in 2009 when Android and iOS were just little tiny itty bitty babies. Uh, <clears throat> Since then, the technology has improved, and the Qi Open standard, developed by the Wireless Power Consortium, is now in use by effectively everyone. And having a universal wireless charging standard is excellent, and there are tons of chargers. Some are cheap, some are premium, and pretty much everything in between. The problem with them is that they're not generally very attractive, even the expensive ones. And as mentioned earlier, they're not truly wireless, so they add an ugly cable that runs off the back of your furniture and needs to be plugged in somewhere. Now, the clever Scandinavians at IKEA started releasing Qi-capable furniture a few years ago, but I don't know if it just didn't sell well or what, because they have reduced their offerings recently to just a few lamps with built-in chargers. I guess that's nice, but it's not really inconspicuous. They also offer, as do many companies on Amazon, a surface mount Qi charger, but you have to ruin your furniture by drilling a massive hole all the way through, and then you still have to put an ugly looking plastic disc into your table, and at that point it's like, just get a thin profile charger and don't ruin your desk. Needless to say, none of these options were appealing to me, so I decided to do things a little bit differently. I went onto eBay and purchased a 10 watt fast charging coil and its accompanying controller without an enclosure for about $8. Now, it also has two coils, which gives you a larger surface area and thus a less sensitive sweet spot, which can kind of be annoying with cheaper chargers. But less than eight bucks shipped is super cheap. And so well, the quality control may have been a reflection of that. When I finally received the charger, uh, one of the little soldered leads was broken off. Uh, no worries, however, because while I could have exchanged it, I suppose, for a, a different one from the seller, it was just simpler for me to solder the little baby leg right back on easy peasy. After I did that, I tested it out and holy crap, it works. I mean, you can use this wireless charger without an enclosure. It's actually a really good one for $8. Now, sure, Jonathan Morrison would probably have a heart attack if he found this monstrosity on his desk, but hey, I mean, it works. That said, we can do better. I wanted to hide this charger inside my desk. Yes, inside. Now, I don't wanna talk any heat, but I would not suggest following one of the many tutorials that are on YouTube that place the entire Qi charger inside an enclosure into your desk. Why? There's a few reasons. Number one, charging speed. Number two, efficiency. And number three, transmission distance. Let me explain. While my tabletop is only three quarters of an inch thick, that is much further than the maximum transmission distance of your average Qi charger. In fact, while the specs on the charger's product page said that it could transmit up to eight millimeters or about a third of an inch, I was pretty skeptical. So I performed some very unscientific tests by placing sheets of paper in between the charger and the phone. I figured, I mean, hey, the desk and paper, they're both kind of made out of wood, which 
Now I'll say that loud sounds super stupid, but more so than the material, I was testing transmission distance. And while it will vary from charger to charger, here are my results. I charged from 20% to 50% on my iPhone 10 in airplane mode from different distances. And it turns out that under four millimeters, the results are about the same, but more than that, and you start to lose a ton of charging efficiency. You use more power, which is inefficiently expended as heat, makes your phone and your table hotter, no bueno, and the, ch uh, the phone charges more slowly. Now, where do I wanna put this thing? Well, I'm right-handed and I don't wanna reach over my keyboard, so as nuts as this sounds, I'm gonna put it off to the right of my mouse pad. It also keeps it outside my direct line of sight, so I won't get distracted. Now I'm going to mark the area with a pencil so I don't forget where it is. And then I'm gonna flip the desk upside down. And now it's time to trace the outline of the charger so that I can bore a hole just a little bit larger so the charger will fit in nice and tight. All right, let's talk tools. Now I am not a woodworker and there are probably much better ways to do this, but all the tutorials I saw online were either very rudimentary and stupid, or they were crazy advanced and were not DIY friendly for unexperienced blokes like myself. So I determined through my very limited knowledge that the probably most easy way and effective way to do this was using a plunge router. Since I don't really plan to become a woodworker and routers can get really expensive, I just bought this cheapo one from Harbor Freight manufactured by Chicago Electric. I would not recommend the Linksys branded one. <laughs> These jokes are getting stupider and stupider every video. Okay, surprisingly for a Harbor Freight item, the reviews are actually really, really good. So hopefully it doesn't crap out immediately. Oh, and I'm also gonna attach a shot vac to the router to cut down on sawdust particles. And that's about it. It's time to get drilling. Uh, drilling? Routing? I don't, know. I don't know what it's called. So it turns out your boy sucks at routing and it was very difficult to see the pencil outline. So I, uh, I botched it by making a hole much larger than necessary and uh, good criminy, it is super uneven. So yeah, uh, my aspirations of becoming a woodworker are uh, permanently destroyed. But hey, I mean, this is gonna be underneath the desk so I don't really care. I thought about maybe burying the charger with epoxy so that the table would become whole once again but I opted to use duct tape instead. Not only because I was lazy, but because it allows me to easily swap out chargers in the future if this one ever craps out on me. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all it takes, and I'm shocked, it works amazingly well. Thanks to that 10 watt throughput, I can fast charge, basically as fast as my iPhone X's receiver coil will allow. Also, there isn't as much of a sweet spot as I was expecting, which is awesome. I had originally thought to put a sticker or maybe like branding some logo into the desk to indicate where the charger was located, but I found it so insensitive to where it's placed thanks to that massive double coil layout that I'm just gonna covertly rock it without any markings. You can also covertly upgrade your talent using Skillshare. Skillshare provides creators with over 17,000 creative, business, tech, and lifestyle classes. I'm currently in the middle of watching Introduction to SAN and NAS Storage, because very soon I'll be building a 336 terabyte ZFS storage and scratch server for all the video that I shoot here at Snazzy Labs. And don't worry, I've got a video coming up very soon on that, so stay tuned. But this is just one short example of the millions of things that you can learn through Skillshare's entire catalog with a premium membership. Improve your value and open new doors with Skillshare. An annual subscription is just $8.25 per month. Better yet, the first 500 people to use my link can get two months of Skillshare absolutely free. Speaking of free, it costs you nothing to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, well, that other button seems to work okay too. Get subscribed for more awesome tech videos like these, also free. And most importantly, as always, stay snazzy.